Welcome to the Art Project. If you're new here, please subscribe. If you enjoy this video at all, please give it a thumbs up. If you get anything out of it, please let me know in the description down below. I'm sorry, in the comments down below. And check the description out for resources that you might be able to use in class. Uh, I made a deck of uh, reference cards and someone was uh, asking me, you know, like, how do we use them? What can we use them for? Here's my little example right here. This is my teacher demonstration for my students. Um, students ask me all the time, like, why, why are we drawing skulls? Why, why do you like skulls so much? Well, I like them so much because, well, they keep my head from being squishy and they protect my, bra uh, my brain. So, anyway... Um, this is the deck of cards right here. This is the box. And if you go to the website in the description, you can download a file which has a template for the box as well as the image that is on it. And you cut it out and you glue it to uh, cut it out, fold it up, and glue it together. And then um, it doesn't have any writing on anything on the outside, but I wanted it to make, you know, to be a skull representation and I also covered I, I printed it out on cardstock and then I covered it in tape packaging tape so it'd be nice and thick these cards I also printed out on a high quality color printer it comes with a grid already on it on each card and you can see they're uh, pretty large they're like uh, four by five inches or so and they have um, a four square by five square grid on each one uh, you can go to the website, you can download the file, you can print them out on cardstock, you can have them laminated if you want, cut them out, and then they will fit nicely into the little box. So, uh, what I usually do is let the students look through the deck and find a card that they like. And some of, most of them have some sort of dramatic lighting on them with a shadow and all that, so they're just great for learning how to draw or practicing certain drawing skills. The back of the card, if you choose to print it, is basically just uh, several contour drawings overlapping one another. It's real abstract, but it's a bunch of skulls. And you can store them in this nice little box. Uh, other things you can do with the cards is you could, you know, if you're doing a larger painting and a skull just happens to be one of the little things that you're uh, wanting to be into your into your painting, well, you can use these skulls as a reference for that as well. You know, there's all sorts of things that you can do. I mainly use them as um, drawing practice um, tools. You know, so uh, in this case, I'm going to create a grid with a one inch border around it, and the grid corresponds with the grid on the card. There is going to be uh, five two-inch squares going uh, one direction and four two-inch squares going the other direction. And so I'm putting a mark every two inches. And once I get those uh, marks, then I'm going to line uh, draw a line that connects them. I'm sorry, I can't talk. Um, it's very important that you draw, uh, that you mark two inch increments across one side like I'm doing right here two inch two inch two inch two inch my first one was one inch because that's gonna be my border but then I do two and then four and then six and then eight one inch two uh, I'm sorry three one three five seven nine anyway uh, two inch increments but uh, I'm not being totally clear here because you could do it much larger you could get an 18 by 24 sheet of paper and you could put a one inch border around that and then you could measure it off in, I think it would be three inch increments maybe, or you could do it even larger, do it four inch increments, whatever. Here I'm cutting off the extra, and as you can see, uh, there is a one inch border all the way around, and then there's a two inch grid, and I'm gonna erase these lines. I did this with color pencils so you could see it better in the video, uh, but in class and in practice, you might actually just wanna use a regular pencil. You'll be able to see the grid on the black paper uh, unlike 
on the video, you wouldn't be able to see it too well. So I did it in white color pencil, uh, but I didn't let that stop me. Uh, when I go to doing the color pencil, I just kind of erase the white line as I need to. So there you go, uh, one inch border all the way around it, four square across, five square down, each one two inches, uh, two inches by two inches. And so when you do this, just do one square at a time. That's what I try and tell my students. Uh, if you try and draw a skull, uh, if you're not really proficient at drawing, then you may not be comfortable drawing a skull and you may not be able to draw a skull very well. But if you draw what's inside each square, one at a time, one square at a time, it will come out looking uh, great. You just have to make yourself do one square at a time and uh, be consistent. Now, there are some places where, like, you know, maybe, for example, an eye socket, you know there's an eye socket there. You know that there's, sorry about that, you know that there's an eye socket there, but it's in the shadow or something in the line is not real defined. Don't worry about drawing those. You're not, you don't have to draw an eye socket and an eye socket and a nose and, a, and teeth. You're drawing shadows and areas of value. So just keep that in mind and that will help as you're doing this. You know, draw the, draw the shadows and the shapes of the highlights and so on and it will be just as good. It lets you know all you need is something that tells you where to color. Now, let me add to this. is If you're a drawing student and you are learning how to draw, let me add to this something really important. As I am looking at this picture and drawing, I'm looking at the curve, I'm looking at the distances, and I'm thinking to myself the entire time, you know, uh, how bright is this area? How dark is this area? How dark is this area compared to this other area over here? What shape is this line? What shape is this shadow? I'm thinking of all of these things and not just the question, but also, of course, the answer to that question, which doesn't formulate into like words necessarily. I have to look at it. I see it. And then I put down what I see. There's not necessarily a word-for-word uh, -word translation, if that makes any sense. And the important thing here that I want you to, to know is that if I'm thinking about those things, like what shape is this, how long is this, and so on, if I'm thinking about those things and trying to answer them, I don't have any room in my brain to turn to my neighbor and talk to them about anything else. I cannot talk to my neighbor and effectively draw anything uh, at least in not not until I've had you know years and years and years of experience behind me and there are you know there's some students out there who have um, who have you know been drawing since they were little kids and they may have that kind of experience but most of the time us beginning artists us beginning drawers and even me I'm 48 years old and I've been doing this for a long time at this point I can't draw effectively while trying to hold a conversation with somebody else about something else. My brain is engaged in everything about this from, you know, what the values are to the shape of the line, to the curve of the line, to the length of the line, um, all of that stuff. I cannot have a conversation effectively and draw effectively at the same time. So when you're in my class, I usually get on to students for talking while they're trying to draw. Notice how I'm using this uh, razor blade. It's a little um, utility knife to scratch out some of the, um, the white. You don't want to do that a lot because obviously you'll cut your paper all up, but I just scrape some of the white off the surface. It's uh, It gets a darker dark than you can get by just erasing. So uh, for that little bit of shadow right there that I accidentally put the white down, I had to scrape it out with a utility knife. Be careful. Don't cut too deep. Um, anyway, uh, as I'm doing this, like I said before, I am constantly looking and cheating off of this reference photo. So this is just the way that I use the reference photos in class. And uh, you, know, you can, uh, if you're a student, then you know follow along with this video and do it this way. If you're a student of mine, uh, if you're a teacher and you're looking for 
you know, other information or things to do with your students, uh, or you're looking for these cards, you can use them for just about anything you want to. Um, no, no rules there. This is just kind of how I use them in class. That little device to the right of my hand is an electric pencil sharpener, and it has an eraser that spins, and so you don't have to move your hand back and forth to erase. The eraser spins in place, and so you can get very fine details with it, and I used it occasionally, and it also seems to kind of like deep clean a little bit better, so it's a little bit better at removing color pencil than a regular eraser is. Uh, don't forget to do your background. Uh, I try to match my background, you know, pretty close. Uh, but I wanted to keep my uh, values, like, really uh, dramatic. So, here we go. That is uh, pretty much it. Thanks for um, watching. If you got any questions, send me an email or ask in the comments down below. And uh, it's your turn. Go draw some skulls.